Hi everybody, this is Sean Overton with OneStepRemove.com and in this video we're discussing position sizing for the scalper EA. And if you'll recall, we spent most of our analysis in 2011 looking at the euro against the US dollar. Now that we know that it makes a profit in our backtest period and that it walks forward and makes money, you can trade fixed lots and it does really well. But you can think of it like an orange. We have an opportunity we want to squeeze out every last drop. Now the goal is we want to do that while maintaining a good sense of what our risk and our reward is. I'm going to show you a methodology that will help you determine what is appropriate for your personal risk appetite. The first thing is we have to look at the metrics that we observed in 2011 and come up with some set of assumptions for what might be realistic going forward. So with any profitable trading strategy or any trading strategy there's only two assumptions and two numbers that you need to know to calculate the expectancy. It's percent accuracy and the R multiple. How often do I win? When I win, how much do I make? When I lose, how much do I lose? And how often do I lose? With the, that bit of information, you can calculate what your expected outcome is and the distribution of how bad it can get and how good it can get. But it critically relies on those assumptions. So the first step that you need to do is to adjust the R multiple and the percent accuracy to, because there's a good chance that we've overstated it. So I spent all of 2011 or doing the analysis in 2011 so there's a good chance that I might have cherry-picked something good. Now I feel confident that I didn't because I walked it forward to 2012 and it did even better but I want to be pessimistic so that I can feel confident in the future that I haven't taken on more risk than I realize. To do that, I follow two rules of thumb. Number one, I decrease the strategy's accuracy by 5%. So in this back test that you see on the screen with NinjaTrader, it made 75.93% profitable trades. I want to decrease that to 70.93%. And the second rule of thumb is to change the R multiple. So when I change the R multiple, I want that to drop by about 20%. And the way I can handle that is I just look at NinjaTrader and I see what the R multiple is. NinjaTrader calls it the ratio average win to the average loss. It's the same thing. And you can see that for 2011, including trading costs, it was 0.53. I multiply that by 0.8, which locks 20% off the top. And the number that I'm left with is 0.424. When I run those numbers in the position sizing software, what I get is that I still expect, on average, to make a profit after trading costs. The reason I'm looking at the pessimistic scenario is I want to see what the worst case is in case I just have a really awful run of luck. And I see that the minimum outcome here was negative 24% after 100 trades, which should correspond to approximately the number of trades in a year. That's great. So now I know that on average, even if I have dramatically overestimated the R multiple and the percent accuracy, I still ex expect to make a nominal profit. Now to come up with what I think might be a decent, more accurate assumption, I'm going to split the difference between the observed accuracy in R multiple and the pessimistic assumptions. So the difference between 70 and 75.93 is 73.43 and the R multiple needs to be 0.477. So that's half the distance between the pessimistic at about 0.42 and the observed at about 0.53. When I run those numbers using the fixed fractional money management you'll see that the average outcome drops I mean increases substantially to 8.9 percent and the minimum outcome has gotten better instead of being negative 24 it's negative 18. Even more exciting is that the best case scenario in case that we have still understated it and we get a huge run of luck the best case is a 40 percent return risking 1 percent per trade. Now if you think these numbers are dull you think 9 percent a year is low I don't I think that's outstanding but the retail crowd seems to think that's not enough. You can increase the risk to do something that you think is appropriate. So if you think you'd like to make 16% a year, then you can just double that number and voila, the average doubles. 
Now, of course, you got to remember that the worst case scenario is doubling too, so it's going to go from negative 24 to negative 48. I'm totally risk averse. I highly recommend picking numbers that are something that you can stomach. And I know from experience of sitting through drawdowns that 25% is where I'm going to pull the plug. But you have a different risk tolerance and you have a different profit motive. So you can use this kind of software to help you pick numbers that make sense for your system and your personal risk appetite. If you have any questions, you can find me at www.onestepremove.com. My name is Sean Overton. Thank you for listening.